There are two super exciting new features in Excel Pivot Tables available to Microsoft 365 users. The first is we can now include images in pivot table row and column labels. And they behave like any other pivot table field in that they update on refresh and respond to filters. The other exciting update is data types are now supported. And this means we can interact with the cards and reference the underlying fields via formulas. Let me show you how these new features work. Pivot tables can use images that have been placed in cells using the image function. As you can see here, where I've used image to bring pictures of the team jerseys into the table. Now, if you're not familiar with the image function, there's a link to a tutorial on it in the video description. We can also bring them in via data types. So on the data tab of the ribbon, under the drop down, we have the built-in data types like geography, currencies, and stocks. We can use images associated with those data types. We can also use images that we've created using Power Query custom data types or Power BI organizational data types. Here I've got a table containing the geography data type and I've inserted the image for each city in column B. You can see I've done it using the dot operator referencing the data type in column A. And soon there'll also be a way to insert images via the insert tab of the ribbon pictures. And in this drop down here, we'll have a new option to place an image in a cell. As you can see, I don't have this option yet, but place in cell is currently available to some users on the insider channel. When that update comes, we'll also be able to insert images via the paste special dialog and the right click menu. Now I want to make it clear that images that are inserted as objects and that float above the grid like this one here, cannot be used in pivot tables. They have to be images that are inserted into a cell using one of the techniques I've just described. All right, let's look at the experience of building pivot tables with images. Here I have a table of La Tour de France data. I've used XLOOKUP to bring the flags and the Jersey images in from their respective tables. Let's go ahead and insert a pivot table based on this data. And I want it on an existing sheet. I've got one already set up to put it in. We'll place it there. And I want to see the rider and then the rider's country flag. I want the jersey and the team name. And in the values area, I want to see the best result. Now I don't want count, I want to sum it. So let's do that first of all, change it to sum. And then in the design tab, we're going to turn the subtotals off and we'll change the report layout to tabular form. We'll sort this column based on the sum of the best GC result. While I've got this column selected, let's go and center the labels vertically. And we'll do the same for this data, selecting the whole table onto center them vertically and horizontally. And let's do the same for the jerseys. These just need to be centered horizontally. All right, now we've done that. Let's add a slicer for the team name. And there it is. I'll bring it over here on the left and make it a bit bigger. Okay, let's filter just for one team and take a look. So it's coming together. I don't need the grand total. So let's go and turn the grand totals off. And let's apply some formatting in keeping with the Tour de France. So we'll go with this yellow color scheme and let's do the same for the slicer. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I don't need all these header labels. So let's turn them off on the pivot table analyze tab. We'll turn off field headers and we also don't need expand and collapse buttons. So let's turn them off. This header remains. I don't need it. I can't delete it, but what I can do is put a space in that cell and hide it. All right, let's just test it out as we choose a different item in the slicer. It's all looking pretty good. This one looks like this row needs to be bigger in keeping with the others. All right, now I've already got some headers from when I did it earlier. So let's grab those. I'm just going to control C to copy. You can see their text boxes and images and let's just place them in and I'll just reposition them a little bit. Okay, so there you have an interactive pivot table with images. 
And if you want the images to be bigger, you just make the cell bigger and the image will resize to fill the space available. Now, unfortunately, images are not supported in slices. So for example, if I add a slicer for the flag image, you can see it just says picture, which is not very helpful. Fingers crossed they're on the to-do list at Microsoft, but I won't be holding my breath. As I mentioned earlier, you can't use image objects. The images must be inserted in a cell. And this means users with Excel 2021 and earlier will not have this functionality. And lastly, tables that contain images cannot be loaded into Power Query, but you can load a URL. So if Power Query contains the URL, you can then convert that to an image using the image function, as you can see I've done here. Another new feature is the ability to create pivot tables from data sets that contain data types and their related images. For example, let's insert a pivot table based on this data and I've got a worksheet ready to go. And here I want to see the city and then the image, the population and the area. Let's change the layout so that it's in a tabular format and we'll get rid of the subtotals. Notice the data type icon is available in the pivot table. I can click on it and I get the card, which gives me some more information about that city. Now, if you're familiar with data types, you may expect to be able to click on a button here to add fields from this card to the pivot table. Unfortunately, you can't do that in a pivot table, but you can reference the cell containing the data type and use the dot operator to extract information. So for example, if I wanted to get the country or region, I could do that and I could copy it down and it populates accordingly. Let's apply some formatting so that these are all centered. There we go, that's better. So there you have two amazing new features available in Pivot Tables. I hope you'll find this tutorial useful. You can download the file for this video from the link here. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.